in six months, I could pass her off as a duchess at an embassy ball. I could even get her a job as a lady's maid or a shop assistant, which requires better English. Your name, please. Your name, miss. My name is of no concern to you whatsoever. One moment, please. There's a young woman who wants to see you, sir. A young woman? What does she want? Well, she's quite a common girl, sir. Very common indeed. I should have sent her away, only I thought perhaps you wanted her to talk into your machine. Well, has she an interesting accent? Simply ghastly, Mr. Higgins. Good. Let's have her in. Show her in, Mrs. Pierce. Very well, sir. See you. What do you want, my girl? I want to be a lady in a flower shop, instead of selling at the corner of Tottenham Court Road. But they won't take me unless I can talk more genteel. He said he could teach me. Well, here I am, ready to pay him, not asking any favour, and he treats me as if I was dirt. She's so deliciously low, so horribly dirty. I ain't dirty. I washed my face and hands before I come, I did. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll make a duchess of this draggletail gutter snipe. Ah! We'll start today, now, this moment. Take her away, Mrs. Pearson, clean her. Sandpaper, if you won't come off any other way. Is it a good fire in the kitchen? Yes, Take I... all her clothes off and burn them and ring up and order some new ones. Just wrap her in brown paper till they come. You're no gentleman, you're not to talk of such things. I'm a good girl, I am. And I know what the likes of you are, I do. We want none of your slum prudery here, young woman. You've got to learn to behave like a duchess. Now take her away, Mrs. Pearson. If she gives you any trouble, wallop her. Pickering, you're just in time for tea. Thank you, Mrs. Higgins. May I introduce Miss Eliza Doolittle? My dear Miss Doolittle. How kind of you to let me come. Delighted, my dear. Lady Boxington. How do you do? How do you do? Lord Boxington. How do you do? How do you do? Mrs. Ainsford Hill, Miss Doolittle. How do you do? How do you do? And Freddie Ainsford Hill. How do you do? How do you do? Miss Doolittle. Good afternoon, Professor Higgins. <laughs> the first race was very exciting, Miss Doolittle. I'm so sorry that you missed it. Will it rain, do you think? The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. But in Hartford, Hereford, and Hampshire, hurricanes hardly ever happen. <laughs> How awfully funny. <laughs> what is wrong with that young man? I bet I got it right. Smash him. Has it suddenly turned chilly? Oh, I do hope we won't have any unseasonable cold spells. They bring on so much influenza, and the whole of our family is susceptible to it. My aunt died of influenza, so they said. But it's my belief they done the old woman in. Done her in? Yes, Lord love you. Why should she die of influenza when she come through diphtheria right enough the year before? Fairly blue with it she was. They all thought she was dead. But my father, he kept ladling gin down her throat. Oh. Then she come to so sudden, she bit the bowl off the spoon. <laughs> Dear me. Now what call would a woman with that strength in her have to die of influenza? And what become of her new straw hat that should have come to me? Somebody pinched it. And what I say is, them as pinched it Done her in. Uh, done her in? Done her in, did you say? <laughs> Whatever did it mean? <laughs> oh, 
Now, that's the new small talk. Uh, to do somebody in means to kill them. But you surely don't believe your aunt was killed. Do I not? Them she lived with would have killed her for a hat pin, let alone a hat. But it can't have been right for your father to pour spirits down her throat like that. It might have killed her. Not her. Gin was mother's milk to her. Besides, he poured so much down his own throat, he knew the good of it. Do you mean that he drank? Drank, my word, something chronic. <laughs> yeah. What are you sniggering at? It's the new small talk. <laughs> you do it so awfully well. Well, if I was doing it proper, what was you sniggering at? Have I said anything I oughtn't? Oh, no. Uh, not at all, my dear. Well, that's a mercy, anyhow. I don't know whether there's enough time before the next race to place a bet, but come, my dear. I don't suppose so. I have a bet on number seven. I should be so happy if you would take it. You'll enjoy the race ever so much more. That's very kind of you. His name is Dover. Come along, my dear, come along. Here they are again, lining up to run. Now they're holding steady, they are ready for it. Look, it has begun. Come on, come on, Dover. Come on. Oh, my dear. <laughs>